Welcome to LabMist.com and our lab video series in Cisco ACS. You can find complete list of ACS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In a network environment that has 802.1x enabled, you most likely need to address network devices that are not 802.1x capable. One of the options is MAC Authentication Bypass or so-called MAP Authentication. And in this video, we will configure wire and wireless MAP on our Cisco ACS. Here's our lab setup. We have a Cisco ACS running version 5.4, the IP of .100, a domain controller in our DNS server, the IP of .40, and a wireless LAN controller at the IP of .104. Now for our test device, we have a wireless access point to test our wire map, and we also have a Windows 7 machine that we're going to be using to test our wireless map. So the way this is going to work is we're going to add the MAC address of the access point and the MAC address of the Windows 7, the wireless adapter, to the ACS server. And then we are going to configure the switch and the wireless LAN controller to authenticate these devices. They will basically perform a MAC address lookup through RADIUS with the ACS, and the ACS will respond with the appropriate network access. So now let's go ahead and log into our ACS server here with the account ACS admin and password. Since we're dealing with the RADIUS authentication, we will need to make sure that we enable radius protocol on our network devices so under the network resources network devices and here we have the controller as well as the switch added from our previous lab so we'll get under the controller first and then enable radius the share secret of cisco and submit and we do exact same thing with the switch one with the share secret of cisco also and submit now we need to add the mac address of our devices which is access point as well as the wireless adapter of the Windows 7. So first we need to discover what those MAC address might be. So here on the switch where the access point is connected to we do show CDP neighbor. And here we see the MAC access point is connected to FAS 1014. So we can do show MAC address interface FAS 1014. So that would be the MAC address of the access point. So let me bring up notepad real quick. Paste that in, and now for the Windows 7 machine, we do IP config all. And here we have the MAC address of 0022757127267. Okay, now we need to uh, create or add the identity groups for our non.1x devices. We're going to call it non-.1x. And later on, we're going to use this particular group as part of the authorization policies. So submit, make sure it's added. So here, non.1x. So now we need to add the MAC address as a host instead of users. We'll click create, and you can see the first view that we need to fill in is the MAC address. So we can copy that and paste. The description will put that as AP, and we'll select the non.1x identity group that we just created and submit. Okay, we create one more and the next one is this and let me try to kind of change the format of that and see what happens just to show you. For description it will be win7 select non.1x submit. You can see that works as well and how it gets converted to a different format with the dashes or every two characters. Now that we have that added we're just going to keep moving down this menu here. Now at the section under policy elements, we have to create authorization profile. But as part of that is a downloadable ACL. And this is how we're going to enforce the access of the network devices. So first let's create one that's to permit all access. So we'll call it LM permit all. And for the syntax, just to make sure I don't have any typo, I'm going to copy and paste what I have here with this permit IP any any. And now under the authorization profile, we'll click create and we'll create one for the wired. So we'll call it LM dash wired dash permit all. Under common task, there's a downloadable ACL that we can select from the list that we just created, LM permit all. Okay, and then we click submit. And now we have to create one more authorization profile for the wireless. Since for the wired, you can define the actual ACLs as the DACL on the ACS itself. It will get pushed down to the switch. But for the wireless LAN controller, you need to use what they call a name ACL, which is created locally. On the wireless LAN controller, 
And what ACS does is just going to tell the controller to reference its own access list. So we don't actually create that access list on the ACS itself. So we'll click create. For the name, it's LM WLAN permit all. And you can see instead of using downloadable ACL, we're going to have to refer to a radius attribute under airspace. Select. And here you can see there's an attribute called airspace ACL name, which referring to a name ACL on the controller. And then we have to type in the exactly the name of the ACL on the controller, which you have one created called LM permit all. And to show you what it looks like on the controller, we're going to lock into the wireless LAN controller. And here under security, access control list, we have a corresponding ACL here with LM permit all that permits any any. Okay, so we need to make sure those names match. So submit. Next, we're going to create the under access policy and access services. So click access services. And this is the policy for the wire and wireless. So first we'll click create. And then for the name, we'll call it for the wired LM dash wired. And for the user service type, it's going to be type network access. We can create one from scratch instead of from a template or existing service. We'll use identity and authorization. We'll leave the group mapping unchecked. We'll click next. For the allow protocol, although for the map, all is required is the process host lookup. But since we're going to use the same access service here for our future labs for 802.1x authentication, we're going to just go ahead and enable EPTLS as well as PEEP. And under PEEP, you need to select what type of inner methods you want to use. It's going to be MSCHAP v2. And for preferred protocol, let's select EPTLS. Finish. And we're going to create one more for the wireless. So we'll call it lm wlan Then type network access. Click next. We'll enable EPTLS and PEEP. And under PEEP is MSCHAP v2. Defer protocol again, EPTLS. Finish. Now that we need to enable those access services under the service selection rules. So we'll click create. Actually, before we do that, we need to distinguish the type of authentication, whether it's coming from wired or wireless. So we're going to create one additional condition using the device type. Click OK and then create. The first one is for wired. So again, we'll name the rule LM wired protocol. We want to match radius instead of TACX. We want this rule to be matched if it's coming from switches. Okay, and we're going to map it to LM wired service. Then we'll create one more for wireless call LM WLAN. Again, protocol is radius. Device type this time is a WLC. And for the result, we're going to send it to LM WLAN access service. Okay, we'll save change. First, we're going to start configuring the wired part of the lab. So we need to get under the LM wired identity. Although we can just go ahead and use a simple rule or a single result selection and then just basically select internal host. But just to prep ourselves for our future labs for 802.1x, there's a chance that we might use the other identity stores. Instead, we're going to turn this into rule based. And then we'll create our first rule for wire map. And as far as compound condition, the way that we can tell that the authentication of radius request is for wire map is to look at the radius attribute, call service type. And then we need to make sure that's equal call check. Okay, if this were to be like 802.1x Ethernet, it will call frame if it's coming from a switch. But for map, it's going to be type call check. So here we use call check. We'll add it to our condition set. And then we said if there's a match, we're going to use our internal host as our identity source or store. And we'll click OK. Okay, so we'll save change. So that is for authentication policy. Now we have to configure authorization policies. So the first rule. Again, we'll call it wire map. And then under compound condition, again, we're going to look for a very specific radius attribute. 
that's going to tell us is the type map authentication. And the first one, again, we're going to repeat it with service type. And it's going to be call check at, which is going to add one more just to make sure it's coming from wired. Although at this point, we should be very certain that it's coming from wired since we condition based on it's coming from a switch device type. Then we need to add NAS port type. Select, and we want that to be equal Ethernet. Okay, we'll add. And we want the logic to be AN. So we want these both these conditions to be true. And then for the result, we're going to permit all for wired. Click OK. And then just to make sure we're not going to be matching the default rule here, we're going to switch from permit access to deny access. So that's all the configuration you need for wire in the ACS. Next, we will complete pretty much the same thing on the wireless side, starting off with identity, switch to rule, we'll create, we'll call it WLAN map with compound condition matching a radius IETF attribute of service type, look for a call check, and then add. And then we'll send that to, or actually use the internal host. Click OK. Save changes. Now for authorization, our first rule for wireless is going to call to land map radius service type and call check add and NAS port type. Since this is wireless instead of Ethernet, we're going to choose wireless IEEE 802.11 and then logical and and we'll select authorization profile of the BLAN permit all. Okay. And we'll turn the default to deny access as well. Save changes. So those are all the configuration we need at this point for the ACS. Now we're going to switch to the configuration on the switch and the wise line controller. So let me bring up the console to the switch. Now there's a whole lot of configuration that we need to complete as far as the AAA and radius configuration and the switch. And I've already developed a template that I'm going to show you right here. Although we're not going to go through each of these commands in detail here, but we have a separate videos that actually go through it in a lot more extensively. And that's called SEC0038. This is part of our ICE video, and it's ICE1.182.1x switch and the BLC recommended config part one. So if you're interested to learn more about these commands, you might want to check out that video. But as far as our lab purpose here, let's go through this really quickly and just try to understand what we have here. We got just general config, crypto key, and this is a triple A authentication with a dot one X. And we have the radius related, the server related configuration. We enable change of authorization. Then we have the port default ACL with the allowing DSCP and DNS by default. And the rest of these are enabling 802.1x at the port level. Okay, so port 14 is our access point and port 19 is where we're going to have our test machine plugged into for our future lab videos on 802.1x wire authentication. I'm just going to go ahead and configure all those right now. So let me go ahead and copy and paste. Okay, and then copy the ACL and the dot one X section. All right, so if we go ahead and do show run interface 14, we should have all those related command in there with the VLAN 64, and this is for our access point. Or you can see there's configuration related to map, and that's how you enable the map on the port, along with the regular 802.1X. You can see already as soon as we copy and paste those commands in there, we start getting some lock messages on our console here. And part of that says authentication successful for our client on port 14. And if you do show auth session interface F1014, you can see here we see the MAC address. And again, this is a very important command that you might want to remember, show authentication session. MAC address of the device, username is the MAC address itself, and this is how we identify the authentication as being MAP type. 
status is authorization success. And we have our downloadable ACL push down from ACS called Allen permit all that we configure on the ACS. And also at the bottom here, the map method is indicating as an authentication authorization success. Okay, if you do show access list and you can see those temporal ACL downloaded here as well with permit IP any any. So now if we go to the ACS and lock into the monitoring and reporting under catalog with the AAA protocol and radius authentication. Here you can see we have a successful authentication with the green color. And first let's take a look at the detail. And username is again the MAC address of the device. Let's go from top to bottom here. Radius status is authentication succeeded. Network device got the switch IPs and the port and the access service that was used is Allen wired. Identity store was internal host as we configured and authorized search profile was the wire permit all. Okay, and that's part of the radius attribute that was part of the radius reply. Back to the switch is the downloadable ACL that uh, identifies the Cisco AV pair with the um, Allen permit all. And then for the authentication detail, authentication method, as I mentioned, is type host lookup right here. So this is more elaborate output. Identity group is non.1x, again, YMAP. As far as the identity policies that we configured using internal host. Okay, at this point, if we hop onto the wise LAN controller and look under wireless, you can see that our access point LMAP1 has successfully registered to our wise LAN controller. So it has full access as we allow our traffic to be permitted. So that is for wired map authentication.